Welcome back. This is still TV3 New Day. And let me give you a bit of information with regards to what is happening in the UK. Their case count, as we speak, is 55,242. Uh, if you uh, look at the number of people who have died so far, 6,159. They are currently on a lockdown. Uh, this is the third week of their lockdown. I'm sure you also know that the UK Prime Minister is actually in the, uh, the intensive care right now because he has coronavirus. And I've been joined by... Uh, by, via Skype by uh, Solomon Arthur, who uh, visited the UK. Uh, he has a family here in Ghana. He visited the UK and he's stuck there. Good morning, Solomon. Good morning. How are you doing? Um, you can't complain. <laughs> Why can't you complain? What's the situation uh, currently in the UK? You are a Ghanaian and you visited... Yeah, I'm a Ghanaian. I'm a Ghanaian. Okay. Yeah, um, UK... Um, I think currently, like, um, we are allowed to go out to buy groceries, okay. um, go out to do, like, uh, go out 30 minutes, 40 minutes to do some exercise. They, they always push people to try to train and stuff like that. So you can go out, jog and stuff. And if limited, um, the bus system, the train systems are shut down. Most of the train systems are shut down, especially the undergrounds, because uh, it's most of the time it's more crowded in the underground than mm -hmm. the overground. Mm -hmm. So they've limited the train system and the bus system. So currently, you only go to places that is really needed. That like the hospitals are open, the pharmacies are open. But mm -hmm. to so just go around, just like you won't even have the food to do. God, you don't have anywhere to go. Mm -hmm. All the all the, the farm places are closed, and the parks are closed down. The stadiums are shut down. Everything is shut down. Okay. With the except, exception of the few places that I mentioned. Okay. So that there, there's so it's a partial lockdown. So yeah, exactly. Your your family is in Ghana, and you are in the UK. Yeah, you, your family is yeah, in Ghana, yeah, yeah. and you are family in Ghana. Okay, so so yeah. do you have a family in the UK? No, I don't have a family in the UK. I'm so, only friends. You have friends. So are you living with a friend right now? No, 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 no. So, you know this country, everything is planned. People live with their family, and okay. a grandma like me to purchase. I mean, purchase with um a family, uh, another family. You understand? Okay. So, well, I'm in an AMB apartment currently. AMB apartment is what? Is it a hotel or it's yeah? It's like uh, like 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 you have your home. Okay. You have like you have your home. Okay. Then maybe you travel, so you rent it out for somebody. You have somebody managing. You rent it for somebody. The person comes to rent it. Then I'm um, staying here for a couple of days. Then okay. after the days you go. So it's like a hotel, but. You do everything basically for you have your kitchen and everything. You do everything for you yourself. You cook for yourself, okay. And how how much do you pay per night there? It depends on where you are. I'm around Fulham Broadway now, and I have a small place. I'm paying about fifty pounds a night. You pay fifty pounds every night. Yeah. And you see casa. Oh, me quite bankrupt. See the see the name yet? See the look at that look at that seven or maybe one. Oh, okay. So you don't have much money on you right now. I don't because have money. And you spend so much, and you can't move around. Have you been calling the embassy to know? I mean, what the plan is? Yeah, I've been calling the embassy for the past five days. Nobody picks up. I've been emailing them. I've sent them about three, or four emails. Nobody's replying. So you, so don't, you don't know, know what is currently happening. You don't know how to plan. You don't. You don't, you don't know unless you wait for another to speak. Then you can pick up something. Mm. Okay, because I mean, now the concern is that you, your family is in Ghana. You are unable yep. to get through to them because there's a lockdown in the UK as well. And here yep. our airports are shut. So you are stuck. You've been in the UK for how long? Since when? Uh, uh, I came, you know, um, I'm a uh, refrigeration engineer, a farmer and artist manager. I actually came here for one or two days. I was supposed to be in Amsterdam to do a couple of shipments back to Ghana. But I wasn't able to go to Amsterdam because of the lockdown, the lockdown that came... <clears throat> That hits the, uh, the UK people first. So, uh, from the state of March till now. Okay, so you've been out, so you've been in the UK from set March. Yeah, so I think I think almost a month. A yeah, month now. it's it's been over a month now. Okay, and and so you're surviving. You're paying fifty pounds per night for where you're staying. You're yeah. having to cook your own meals, exactly. and you're running out of cash. The embassy is not. The embassy no. is not picking your calls. They are not replying your emails. They are emails. not picking any calls. They are not even responding to any emails. Mm. Yeah. You know, the, the embassy is around uh, North London. It's closed. Okay. Oh, that. Okay, so you have a family in Ghana. 
Yeah. So how, how do you? So how do you okay. communicate with your family? Mm, WhatsApp, yeah. Okay, so you do WhatsApp calls and then you send messages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you you you, yeah, you, right. you mentioned that you have a business here in Ghana. You say you're a farmer and a couple of things. I'm a farmer. I'm a refrigeration engineer. I okay. mean, that's the only thing that is surviving me now. Trust me. Okay, so how how are you protecting your business here in Ghana? That's the problem. That's the problem. You know, um, when we are not there. When you are not there, it's a, it's a different thing. But I'm lucky I've got good managers that okay. are actually on, on their toes um, doing the day-to-day -day activity for me. But, you know, you always not get it perfect like you are there. But mm -hmm. I would say 85% I'm okay. Just that the money keeps going. Without, I mean, the money keeps going without getting it back because I'm, I'm overspending mm -hmm. and I'm not getting the money back In here. Return. Okay, okay. So finally, so what's, what are you appealing for? I mean, what's, what's your plea right now? Yeah, my my appeal is like uh, if the embassy can respond to our calls and tell us something, what is happening, what is the plan or something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if maybe there is a special arrangement or something, because trust me, if it's supposed to be a British, the British embassy in Ghana will definitely do something, maybe accommodate them or something. I mean, like something, I don't know, but they should come up with something because it's not only me. A lot of people are stuck here, a lot of mm -hmm. people are stuck here, not only mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I, on, on it, our flight got cancelled on the 20th, 20th of March. Mm -hmm. And if you could see the number of Ghanaians that was trying to board the British Airways, that mm -hmm. the flight was cancelled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trust me. A lot of people are stuck in the UK. Solomon Arthur, yeah. we are grateful that you made time to speak with us this morning. I know it's not easy for you, but I'm sure that the embassy uh, is watching us now and they will be picking your calls and replying your your various emails. We wish you all the best, by the all way, right. Solomon. Arthur is a Ghanaian base in the UK. He went to visit his, uh, uh, the UK to transact some business. He's stuck there. He's been there since March 6th uh, and he's calling for some support uh, here and there, Bella. I mean, it's oh, such yeah. a, a, a sad situation for, it for Solomon. Because he's stuck. He doesn't know what to do. Hmm. You know? He doesn't know. And he pays 50 pounds per night for where he's sleeping, which is not sustainable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah.